Hey guys, Taylor Gibson here. And I just want to go over all these pictures here with you. A lot of them are very old, some of them are more recent, but they're all related to Odyssey of Fire, particularly the Spark. You know, just it's it's like conceptualizing the what characters will look like, what certain things will look like. Here we have a picture of Gracie, Azki, and little Selena, like she's like four years old there. These give you a rough idea of what the characters kind of look like in my head. This is actually not a picture I drew, rather a printout, and this is how I imagined the landscape of right in here. This is a very old picture of Azki, and actually here's another one of Gracie. As you can see, their designs haven't changed a lot. I might actually go back to these older designs, like yeah, the beat-up dress. This is the way they're meant to look, although I like the idea of Gracie having the whip uh, rather than the sword. And I could also have these little orb things with tails flying around the whip. She also had like a phoenix feather, and he had some sort of chalice with fire, and he could use magic. Oh, he also had the phoenix feather too, you can see. Yeah, and he has a great sword. So here we have a picture of Liam Neeson, and... Yes, I want to cast Liam Neeson as Abaka, the wizard, the mentor figure for Sue and George and Molly Sue. The thing is, like, yeah, I've got to figure out how I would get him involved. I don't know if you're seeing this video, Liam Neeson, or if you're going to see this video in the future when we cast you. Ever since I was, like, a teenager, like, I've always said, I think Liam Neeson would make, like, a great wizard character. I think he could pull off Abaka really well. This is probably the oldest drawing in the stack. This is the first ever concept drawing of Abaka. As you can see, his hair isn't green. It's more of a silver color. Decided to make it green to make him stand out from other wizards. He's doing a sign that he likes to do. Another landscape drawing of right in here. So you can see the sun, although, and then here you have the, the neighboring planet of Venga too. Here's a drawing of Gina. She's actually supposed to have freckles. I don't know why I didn't draw those on there. But she has like red hair and freckles. That's one of Stewie's best friends. Nadia and Noel are also two of Stewie's closest friends. And all three of them are amazing characters. I'm excited to cast them in the TV show. For Nadia and Noel, I was thinking about either getting real twins or casting one actress and just duplicating her. Here we have a concept of a Froud. Now, Frouds are a race that live in, in the series and in the universe. They're kind of short and stubby, and they have hairy bodies and big mouths with like little teeth and, and big gums and spread out beady eyes. Not the prettiest of creatures, but they do know how to like make mechanical things. Then this is actually a really old drawing as well. It might actually it might even be older than that Abaka picture that's in there. But this here is a branch, like a, a stick, like that fell off of a pine tree, and I just drew it. And just because it's so old and I've had it for so long, I, it's just something I did for fun. And you can see it was July 2nd, 2010 that I drew this. Just because I've had it for so long, I feel like I want to make something, make a tree or something in Odyssey of Fire that just looks like this. This is a concept of George's demon. George has a demon inside of him. I think I've mentioned that in the podcast. This is an idea of what the demon may look like. It shows off a bit of his personality. He's just very, he's very taunting and, and cruel, and he'll tease George a lot. This is probably made around the same time I made the Liam Neeson Abaka picture. This is a picture of Nicole Fantle. She's played in Attack of the Clones as like one of the background senators. And she's also played the voice of Fran from a video game called Final Fantasy XII. And it's one of my all-time favorite video games. I really liked her voice, and I thought maybe I could give her a starring role as Sui and Molly Sue's mother, Selena. This is John, and I was going to have Ben Stiller play John, but honestly, I don't know if he'd be fitting. 
here we have a scene from the book. This is also an older drawing, so like Sui's design is a little different. Also George's too. George used to wear a hoodie, but you have Sui talking to George, and there's just like people at the party, the birthday party, hanging out. Here's a concept of George, and this is pretty much what he looks like, except I imagine his hair is probably a little bit longer. And he doesn't have as full of a beard because he's actually 18. This is later down the line. More drawings of George. Here you have the Osborne house. That's like a rough idea of what it looks like. Another one of the Osborne house. This time we have paths going down. This is also a very old drawing. It's a deodorant or cologne type thing. And this is like showing like a commercial of it. And it, the slogan here is like, smell the love. Here we have Sui and George. Design-wise, like I said, Sui's changed a lot. Although her hair is pretty much the same in this. Here we have pictures of Jakei. They're all uh, male. Actually, this one might be a female, but you can see they're kind of monstrous creatures. I based their designs off orcs, but I made some changes. Like, their ears are so huge. They also have this ability to unhinge their jaw and make, like, a, an intimidating roar. And they have, like, dragon-like feet. They're, you know, obviously they have their green and brown and, you know, ugly-looking skin that's, like, like gross and rotting-looking. Like, jacket are more purple and they have smoother skin. Here you have uh, a really, I'm really proud of this drawing that I did, and this is a while back. Uh, it's a drawing of George, and this is a pretty good idea of what he'll look like in the TV series. Like I said, his hair will probably be longer and lighter, but uh, yeah, there's, you can see he's got whiskers, he's got a cat-like nose, his eyes are feline and devilish, he's got sharp teeth. You can't really see his tail, obviously, because it's a facial profile, but he's got horns and cat ears, and, uh, and he's got really pale skin. Here is a drawing of Fajin. I don't have a lot of drawings of him, but he's very skeletal. I don't think I have any full body pictures of him, but the way I imagine him is he's very gaunt and skeletal and extremely tall. He's like seven feet tall, and he has long black hair and and the skin is black as space, is how I describe him in the book. Here we have more concepts of Jacquet. These are kind of what I want them to look like. I'm thinking about actually using these designs in the TV show, like having the makeup artist look at these. They can see this one, he's got like a really messed up face and he's actually blind. He's missing a nose, missing his lips. All the others are relatively normal jockeys, a few scars here and there. Here's a pretty good drawing of Sakan. He's the, uh, the hobbler character in the show and then the book. He's got like these frog-like eyes and an ape-like face. He's really annoying, I think, but like that's part of his character. Oh yeah, and so Sakan was actually before I started making my own unique races, I mean, I made some unique, uh, you know, obviously I had Jake since the beginning, but they used to be called Jawikiwaz. Sakan used to be called Spike, and he was a goblin, and he had, like, really wrinkly skin, and, you know, shriveled up, wrinkly. Here you can see a uh, concept of an airship, but I, th I believe it's the one that the character LaRue flies later in the series, in the, in the first season. And here's the anchor for the ship, the airship. It, they lower this and it brings the airship down. Picture of Lubaka. Here's Selena. She's holding the whip in her right hand, kind of rolled up, and she's got a sword. Here's John holding his handgun. They both know magic, but they use weapons alongside it. Picture of Ibaka casting some spells. Here is a drawing of a necklace that Sui wears in Spark. It's like a fiery leaf and with like a chain on it. This is another old drawing. This is Abaka writing stuff down. Interesting concept is that it is an infinity.
10 soul, which means he'll never run out of lead. And here's like some drawings. I actually, well, this is like really old, so like I used to draw stuff in composition notebooks and, and write these things called briefings that were uh, talking about um, different things that happen. And I'm gonna have to actually reread this. It's been a while. This is Neodymion. He's he's actually a Gorman, but he looks similar to a Jaka. This is a exotic bird that's gonna show up somewhere in the book. Uh, it's called uh, I think he's he's just got a name called Carrots. Here's a, something interesting: some plant life that I drew. These are some plants that exist on Emga One. And you can see there's like mana, morna berries. Angi. There's a shig, which I actually changed the name to Shibula. And they're basically these monstrous, really big creatures. They're like a cross between a grizzly bear and a boar. Incredibly scary. Here's a better picture of a Shibula. This is a Trent. I changed the name because it's actually used in common fantasy. This is a thing called a Jurger. And uh, it's like a lemur monkey type thing. And they live in trees that look like this in the jungle. They're carnivorous creatures. They don't eat any plants at all. They're scavengers. They'll eat dead animals, a lot of shibulas. I think I'm going to end it here because there's just so much more that I can do. We will continue this in part two. But I will show you this one last one before we go. And these are actually, I guess you can say they're like extras, although I gave them names for fun, but they're actually like these people that live in a place called Northern Shimbia and Old Shimbia. As you can see, they're all really skinny and malnourished and they're because they're poor. Because that city is like a place where a whole bunch of poor people roam the streets and there's hardly anyone that lives there. Uh, that, and, you know, and housing and everything. It's kind of an abandoned city and people who still live there fend for themselves. But yeah, I hope this has been exciting and we'll continue this in part two. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe please, and check out my Patreon. Information on that will be in the description and we'll leave a link to it. Have a good day. Bonus content. I just wanted to show you guys you know, my balcony in my apartment. Just come out here sometimes just to hang out. I got a few things. Just little decorations. For the fan core.